many of you, a man who can do the back of the eye and the front of the eye and is a, a, a known expert on cataract and refractive uh, issues. So thank you, Oliver, for talking about the, the standard and old-fashioned approach. Thank you very much. I have no financial disclosures which are relevant. I guess you two, Alistair and, and Jan, had a good laugh when you gave me the, uh, the topic of, of the uh, ACIOL because it's a little outdated and that means also boring. <laughs> it's like a dead duck. Um, so thank you very much for that. Um, my last ACIOL was actually in 2009. We don't have an ACIOL lens bank anymore since several years. But now obviously I had to go into literature and we'll see. So but. I want to talk about the types of ACI wells, essentially the history of ACI wells, because that's relevant, because many of the lenses we're explanting today are actually quite old ACI wells. Then about the adverse events, um, and also about refractive outcome, just briefly at the end. So here you can see the first lenses out in the 50s, Stampelli, Choice, Danheim, Ridley, severe so corneal decompensation, severe um, uveal reaction because of erosion of uveal tissue a lot of inflammation. Then Barocare came out with an open ACIOL with uh, nylon haptics, and these actually biodegraded and caused decentrations and also other problems. And then came also some sort of closed loop um, haptics with semi-flexible loops, but again, problems with the iris and also uveitis. And then essentially came at some point the flexible open loop haptics. Of these, there were also the Kelman types um, and the Dubrov uh, style and then the one we essentially use today, which um, has these choice type foot plates. Um, these are the ones which we're still explanting today. Um, one of the problems is these small openings, these eyelets, which also sometimes cause fibrosis with the uveal tissue and actually make explantation quite difficult in some cases. So just these closed loops, that's, I think they are the main reason for the poor reputation of, of ACIOLs excessive vaulting, fibrosis, as I just said before, corneal decompensation in many cases, um, and chronic inflammation with CME, glaucoma. And they were also removed from the market in the 80s. And then again came the, um, the uh, open loop haptics with have a small area of contact. You can see here the implantation ratio. So at that time of when this publication came out, most uh, ACIOLs that had been implanted were open loop. Um, and the closed loops were a smaller part, but they had a very large um, ratio of explantation. You can see here that these closed loop lenses had uh, really significant um, uh, reason, um, reasons for that explantation, especially inflammation, uh, corneal problems, and CME. Let's go look through the adverse events uh, in, in sort of a more systematic fashion. There's one randomized control trial. There are not very many trials about ACIOLs, as you can expect, but. There's one large trial by Collins with 438 eyes. Um, what he did is he had obviously patients with capsule rupture and vitreous prolapse, but sufficient capsule support also for a posterior, capsule, for a posterior chamber IOL uh, without sutures. Um, uh, he then randomized into posterior chamber and AC IOLs. One year follow-up. And essentially, when you look at most of the complications, there are actually no significant difference between the two groups. For uh, visual acuity, there is, so slightly worse visual acuity for the AC IOL groups, but not much. Another very recent publication by Doug Koch's group, a retrospective consecutive series of 167 eyes, um, now comparing scleral sutured, iris fixated, AC IOL, sulcus placement with optic capture, sulcus placement without optic capture. These are the early adverse events, and you can see very, very little for AC IOLs, actually the lowest number for AC IOLs. If we look at the later adverse events, we can see that these are a little higher, but still quite low. So they actually summarize that obviously sulcus placement is the number one uh, uh, aim, what you should aim for, but that the three others, whether scleral sutured, iris fixated, or ACIOL, actually are pretty much the same, not much more different. And actually scleral sutures seem to have higher complication rates um, on adverse events in this, in this series. Now sizing is obviously an issue with ACIOLs. Um, you, the sort of uh, rule of thumb is, is take the white to white diameter and add a millimeter. Uh, the problem is that if, well, there's very few uh, centers that still have a, 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 a lens bank with different sizes, so many only have one type at this point, um, and usually the larger um, ACIOL. But uh, ideally, you, you would have them in different sizes. You can have oversized or undersized, and I'll go into those problems. Obviously, oversized can cause pupil ovalization. 
prediction. Here you can see um, also quite high numbers in some of the series which were published. And then uveitis glaucoma hyphema syndrome has been uh, first described in the, late eight, in the late 70s actually for one specific ACRL type and has been seen obviously with other ACRL types. But you can also see it with posterior chamber position lenses, especially if they're in out, that means one haptic is in the capsule and the other one is out in the sulcus, then that often can cause ARC syndrome. Um, here, the, um, uh, the reasons for aural exchange between 86 and 2002, and you can see for posterior chamber lenses, it was usually decentration, dislocations, or refractive errors. And for the ACIRLs, which needed to be explanted, it's ARC syndrome and persistent iritis in, in these cases was, was, were the main reason. Now, what about undersized? If it's too small, well, that happens, it becomes mobile, it can do propellering, it can move. Um, and also probably during eye rubbing, especially also during saccades, there's uh, slight microcurrents against the endothelium, and that's probably one of the reasons for endothelial cell loss. Um, and here you can see now a series um, of, uh, for five-year follow-up, here in this case comparing uh, the endothelial cell counts with fake controls, which is not really fair. What you really should do is actually compare it to at least controls which also had cataract surgery. And you can see here for primary ACRL, um, with that control group, there's actually no difference at five years. Only for secondary implants, there was a slight difference. So actually here with modern ACIOLs, uh, the endothelial cell loss, at least at five years, seems to be relatively low. And here also looking at two years uh, from, from the first exam to, to the last, the second exam, um, also essentially no difference in endothelial cell loss. Um, there are, of course, always some persistent corneal edema uh, cases, um, but um, again, here you can also see that for the anterior chamber lens in general, looking at all complications, actually less complications than for posterior chamber lenses, in this case, scleral fixated sutured lenses. One thing is also what you need is an iridotomy or iridectomy, and one issue can be if it's undersized that it actually will rotate and then one of the haptics can disappear in, uh, in the iridectomy, which will cause a decentered and tilted lens and often can also cause Ugg syndrome in these cases. Uh, there is one uh, uh, small series of eight patients uh, with actual uh, suturing to the iris to actually stop uh, rotation of the lens, but propellering of the lens. Uh, which would be an option if you don't want to explant the lens. Looking at IOP, um, you can see here again a series uh, um, in, 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 a, in a trial, AC versus uh, uh, sulcus fixated lens again, and uh, you can see that the uh, IOP rise is pretty much the same in, in both groups. And obviously interest, interesting is glaucoma um, escalation. This is actually an AAO report from a few years ago. And what you can see here is that uh, the, the glaucoma escalation or progression towards glaucoma was the same for both uh, ACIOLs, scleral sutured, or iris sutured. Again, we're always talking about modern ACIOLs, not the old type. Here, refractive outcome. Uh, uh, the uh, paper by Brunnen again, and what you can see here is within plus or minus a half a diopter, within plus or minus one diopter, and you can see here we're actually very, very close to all the other types, whether it's a, a, a suture fixated, iris fixated, or scleral positioning with or without optic capture. And actually we're very close here to uh, what the, uh, uh, what, what the, uh, the UK uh, defines as, as where we should be for, for capsular bag positioned lenses. So these are the pros and cons, the way I would summarize it. I think ease of insertion is clear. ACIOLs um, are the easiest to insert. That's also what we would like our trainees to use at the beginning. Um, obviously, uh, as well, both scleral fixation and iris fixation is, is a little more fiddly. The operating time is probably the shortest uh, for the ACIOL, although a retropupillary iris artisan lens can also go in uh, very quickly. Incision size it may, is obviously something which is good for the scleral position because you can fold, you can use foldable lenses. You will need an iridectomy or iridotomy for the ACRLs. You don't need that for the other two. Centration is usually very good, which can be a problem and a bother with the other two. Subluxation uh, doesn't happen here, but can happen here because of suture breaks, as Jeremy just pointed out before, or also here desenclavation, if the, especially if the patients have trauma to, to the eye after surgery. And corneal decompensation is what we just have in our minds as being one of the main drawbacks of ACIOLs. And the question really is, in the studies, it doesn't really come out with modern ACIOLs. So it's obviously uh, something which is still um, a little questionable in uveitis and UG, 
again, um, may also be a problem with scleral lenses, at least during, according to the literature. So to conclude, um, they have a poor reputation, especially during, due to the corneal decompensation after many years. I believe with modern, op uh, modern open loop ACRLs, that may be significantly better. My personal preference is in younger patients, sulcus fixation. I used a Yamane technique myself, which works very well and is quick. Um, older elderly patients uh, uh, with a good iris, with normal iris, not floppy iris, I uh, tend to use a retropupillary iris claw lens. But I must say, modern ACIOLs are absolutely acceptable and don't seem to be a dead duck in my eyes anymore. Thank you. <laughs>